Welcome back to True Vine Talks with Linda and Rachel. We are happy that you have joined us for this Saturday morning talk. Today we're going to um, venture off in a little, little different area that we haven't kind of... Well, we did the power of the subconscious mind. That was kind of neat. Yes. So today we're going to do a little fun psychology on the games that people play. This book was written by Eric Byrne. And Rachel has had some training in this um, model, which is super helpful. Because when I was in school, I didn't have that. So um, I'm just learning the model myself. So um, what, one thing we like to do is preface today's podcast as... Um, this is more psychology, fun material. This isn't, you know, we're not implying that anyone plays this game. We're just saying these are the kind of the psychological things that people engage in to get their needs met. Okay, so, you know, we are EFT therapists, but we also know that other models play an important role in how humans interact and behave. Is that... Accurate, Rachel? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So we're not implying that anyone that we see or anyone that we know is doing these things. This is just human psychology. And yeah. it's kind of a fun thing for us to venture yeah, in. Yeah, some fun information. Thanksgiving, Christmas are coming up. Maybe you've got some family members that like to play games. We'll hope you get ready. <laughs> yeah, when you're sitting at the Thanksgiving table... And you notice your inner child coming out and you're getting angry at your critical parent, you know, that that could be helpful to understand what's going on for you. Have you ever been around a a family member and you lose it? Oh, yeah. And you're like, what just happened? Who's that person? What's going on right now? Yeah. Hopefully, after the podcast, you might understand what's going on. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So, thank you. And... We're going to start off with, oh, and Rachel's going to talk about this, the um, the three ego states that Dr. Byrne talks about. What are those? Yeah, so um, basic transactional analysis, or TA, um, claims that we all, regardless of your age or where you're at in life, your level of intelligence, everyone has three kind of basic ego states. So one of those is the parent ego, all right, which I will uh, refer to as the, the parent part, okay? And this is that part that you slip into when you're feeling uh, critical of yourself or critical of others. If you catch yourself saying things like should, need, or ought, uh, those are three signs that you're in your, your parent part. Interesting. Yeah. Everyone should... You know, immediately go when the light turns green. I don't know why I always have to wait on people to get their stuff together and go, right? Being critical. Um, Everyone also has an adult ego state or an adult part. This is that kind of rational, logical, reasonable part of you. Mm. Uh, When you're having an adult conversation with someone, you're both calm, cool, and collected. You're talking adult to adult ego Mm. states. You're not arguing. Uh, we have. Would you call that the wise mind? Yes, I would. Yeah. Oh, the wise mind. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that's in that other model we know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Linda and I always talk about how the there's all these different overlaps, but there there there's a lot in common between them. It's really neat. Cool. Okay. So and then the third is the child ego or child part, and this is uh, the part that you're in when you're. You're feeling anxious, or your feelings are hurt, you're upset, you're angry because things aren't fair and they're not going your way. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you're in that, that child part of you. You slip back into maybe how you would have responded to things when you were younger. I want that. Yeah. Why can't I have that? It's not fair. <laughs> yes. Give it to me, Mom. <laughs> or your spouse. Would you please buy me another camera? <laughs> <laughs> I need that camera. Yes. Sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So parent, adult, and child. Yeah. So when you're interacting with people, even in just going into um, 
to get your coffee. I love coffee. I'm always talking <laughs> yeah. about Starbucks, aren't I? And your interaction with someone is, say, like, you know, they cut line. What part of yourself comes out when they cut line for their coffee? Does your adult show up, or does your parent show up, or does your child show up? It depends on how you respond. Yeah, it could be any of the three. Yeah, so if you're, if you're like, hey, man, what are you doing? Did you not see me standing here? Which critical part is parent. that? Okay, <laughs> the critical parent critical shows up. Parent hopped on board there, took over. Now, what about your child part? How might your child part in- react to that? If you kind of laugh it off, right? Because I guess I'll go more in depth um, then. So, the adult is the adult. Mm-hmm. The parent is actually there's there's two parts. So I've only mentioned the critical. There's also a nurturing, nurturing parent, parent. nurturing parent. Um, and then child, there is not only the hurt and angry, there, there can also be a fun, right? Oh, yeah, the so, fun kid. Yeah, the fun, high energy. Think of Tigger bouncing around. Um, so if you make a joke out of it, because a lot of people deflect with humor, right? Yes. Uh, so you crack a joke and you become friends with this person. I know people that will find a friend anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like gr- check it out at the grocery store. All right, so that could be your child, your fun child. Um, if you, you know, cross your arms and pout about it and get angry and think, ugh, you know, think to yourself, ugh, this always happens to me. People mm. are so rude. No one has respect anymore, right? That could be the hurt, angry child part. Yeah. And then if you respond by um, maybe just, you know, politely tapping them on the shoulder and saying, hey, uh, I don't think you saw me standing here. Uh, the line starts back there, or, you know. Ooh, that's the adult part. It's the adult, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, I think, how would you respond in that interaction at the coffee shop? Oh, Starbucks. It's a complicated question because I, I, I feel like people, the way we respond is kind of affected by what's happened earlier in our day like it's kind of a, a snowball effect so yeah. I don't know if I had woken up late and I was rushing but I had you know just enough time to stop and get a coffee and then I get cut off in line and as much as I try to stay in my adult I would I think I would probably be like are you kidding me I don't have time for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey I wonder if that's why when people say you know my day started out bad and it stayed bad is that because they stayed in that ego state? Yes, I think so. Ooh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, so you started your day in, you know, the critical ego state, and you just mm-hmm. and you didn't realize it. You weren't self-aware, so we stayed there. We let mm-hmm. our, you know, critical parent be in the driver's seat all day. Yeah. You know, I often, when you I talk You dummy, about, why didn't you get up in time? Yeah. <laughs> that's like critical parent. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the adult would say, hey, you overslept, and we'll pull this back together, and we'll get focused in and do the adulting. Yeah. It's yeah. a good day for a good day. We got this. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Wow, that's good stuff. I like it. I do, too. Yeah. I, I often, when I talk about it, I will, um, for some reason, I've just kind of developed this thing where I talk about it in terms of, you know, all these different parts are like driving in a car. Mm-hmm. You know, who's in the driver's seat? Okay. Who's in the, the front passenger who's kind of like giving the driver directions? Who's in the back seat that we're ignoring and not listening to? And sometimes for people, for, especially for the nurturing parent part, because we so often forget to nurture ourselves and be kind to ourselves, which mm-hmm. is very important. Sometimes we'll say, man, he's just a hitchhiker. He's not even in the car. We're not picking him up at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to Good need analogy. To in the car. Yeah. Good analogy. Yeah, you know this model, Rachel. That's good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so, so it's important to know these parts, your ego states and what's showing up um, for you so that if your day is starting out with, you know, that inner critical parent saying, oh, you, you overslept again, you dummy. You know, if you hear that, you know, you've got to 
go into that adult ego state and say, you know, well, probably the parent nurturing state would help. Hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. You were tired. And that's that EFT stuff yep, too. Yep. You were tired and you need a little extra rest, Rachel. And now we're going to pick into the adult part of ourself and just, we're going to get our stuff together, tell the boss what happened and, and, and get grounded and go on. Mm-hmm. Give ourselves a little nurturing there. Yeah. I think it, it goes really well with the EFT. I'm thinking it does. They blend very nicely together. Very, very good. Yeah, very good. So, um, what are some other important things for our listeners to know about the games that people play in this? Yeah, I guess before we start talking about different types of games, it would be important to know that the critical parent Mm -hmm. and hurt child part are often engaged at the same time. So when we feel hurt by others, Mm -hmm. we will often go from feeling hurt to being critical and wanting to kind of get revenge in some way. Like, oh, they shouldn't do that. How, mm-hmm. Like, that's unfair. They shouldn't treat me that way. Right? That that's unfair is to her child. The they shouldn't treat me that way is the critical parent. So, uh, and then in terms of like um, being depressed or anxious, the self talk, um, when we're critical with ourselves, we'll literally hurt ourselves. So, oh, you're, you're so stupid. Why can't you get it right? Mm-hmm. Why do you always make these mistakes? Oh, I'll never get it right. I'm so worthless. Mm. Go from the critical to her. So those two bounce off of each other a lot. So as you're sharing so beautifully, Rachel, um, I'm thinking, wow, I'm thinking self-harm comes up for people. Mm. If they're stuck in that critical parent hurt child. Yeah, that back and forth. That ego state. so states. hard. Yeah, and I do see self harm and and thoughts of suicide when people get stuck in that back and forth critical oh. and hurt a lot. Yeah, wow, wounded child and critical parent. Yeah, ego states. Yeah, because it just it becomes like an all day cycle of I'm not good enough. Mm. I'm worthless. I'm not good enough. I'm. Yeah, so what is it you tell yourself? When you feel sad. Mm, That's that EFT stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, you tell yourself you're not worthy. And that brings water to your eyes, Rachel, as you share. She has a very empathic heart, this Rachel does. (laughs) (laughs) Like an emotional sponge. Can't even talk about other people feeling sad without getting sad myself. (laughs) So that tells you that Rachel has an empath heart. And... Her nurturing parent inside of her shows up in her sessions with her teens and her kids and her adults. And that's what makes Rachel an amazing counselor. Aw, thanks, Linda. Aw. We're all warm and fuzzy over here at True Vine. Yeah. Yeah. So so in knowing that um, people go in that cycle of critical parent, wounded child... What are some, you know, ways of stepping out of that cycle they get into within? Yeah. So, self care, which mm-hmm. we talked about, is a, is a is a really good way of getting people to start nurturing and caring for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people will who aren't ready to dive into the emotional stuff will start with a basic CBT. Um, okay, what what are what are we thinking? What, how can we change that? Mm. Um, and then um, we talked in the last podcast about the empty chair. Mm-hmm. I, think, um, I like to use that uh, with you know, the EFT stuff and the TA. So we'll have like, okay, this is a our hurt child chair, mm. and this is our adult and nurturing parent chair. And what does the nurturing, logical, rational part of us need to say to the part that's hurting. Very good. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that goes into that family systems therapy where, you know, the trauma stuff, you want to heal the wounded child. So when that wounded child is sitting in an empty chair, the nurturing parent part of yourself shows up. And we call that the exile self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that neat? It's so powerful. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, um, you know, the, the, the client is not ready um, or they can't find the words. And so you explained um, really well last week that I can't remember the term that you use when you are saying for the client what needs to be said. Proxy voice. Proxy voice. That's what we use in yes. emotionally focused model. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So the proxy voice can be used for that too. Mm -hmm. Talking to that hurt child part, like you didn't deserve to be treated that way. Mm -hmm. You have every right to feel sad. Of course you feel sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, I think just, have hearing someone else say that oh it's okay for me to feel this way mm. but it's not going to last forever mm -hmm. and I deserve to take care of myself and be happy like mm. hearing someone say that is so validating yeah what does it do to our limbic systems just soothes it's like giving your limbic system a hug <laughs> yeah yeah Therapy's great. It is. Counseling's awesome. Yes. Yeah. We love what we do, me and Rachel. So, cool. So, in talking about this, um, you know, I think, you know, the fun part of this, you know, the childlike parts of me and Rachel like to talk about just general, you know, games that people play that maybe, you know, say like you, you go somewhere and... You know, like Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, we, we were going to bring in Thanksgiving dinner because yeah. it's coming around the corner. It is. A couple weeks. Oh, yeah, so you're sitting at the Thanksgiving table and, you know, someone at the table has something critical to say about your childhood. Because <laughs> yeah, they, they grew up with you. And they say, oh, remember when, Linda... You, you were crawling underneath the pews and cussing at church. I love this story. I'm always like, why do people bring this story up? <laughs> Every single time I'm around my family, I get told about crawling underneath the pews and cussing during the church service. That's, that's a great time for me. So automatically, what, what ego states show up for me? Well, I'm going to guess that you get embarrassed. So you're in the hurt child. Hurt child shows up. And then maybe flip into a critical parent. Be like, why you always got to bring this up at every meal we have together, y'all? <laughs> I'm it, much older. Yeah. I don't act that way anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't crawl into the pews and cuss at people in church. <laughs> By the way, my, my childlike grandma put me up to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She thought it was funny. In her humorous, childlike part, thought, oh, I'm going to make my chi my grandchild be a child and, and get everyone, you know, laughing in church. So she thought it was funny, and the critical parent that showed up was saying, oh, my gosh, you're getting a whipping for this. And, you know, I get taken out and whipped for cussing in church. <laughs> yeah, it, we, they were allowed to whip us back then. You know, we're not talking about my age or nothing, but, you know, I'm cool with it. I don't mind. It was the 80s. And they were able to just take us out of the church and give us a whooping. Sure. So, that childlike part shows up at the Thanksgiving dinner. Why are they bringing this up again? You know? And so, in your alls, as I say, your alls out West Virginia here, when you're going to a family dinner, what all is happening? for you internally and for our clients or our listeners? What might be happening for them? Some people might be in their fun child or their adult and enjoy it. Other people might be in their her child and critical parent and dread it. So there you go. Yeah. 
depending so, on your family dynamics sure. and what you've experienced at family gatherings. Yeah. And what makes other family members play this game of putting you in that vulnerable space? There's a little 48 Laws of Power. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> what games are they playing, Linda? They are making you the scapegoat. Yeah. They're putting you in a villain or a scapegoat position. And the reason they're doing that is because when they're around you, they're feeling what? What part of their ego state are they in that's causing them to feel the need to criticize you? What's happening for them? Mm. What do you think is happening for them they when might, they're around you? might be feeling self-conscious about something. They're comparing um, success or, or life experience. And yeah. So they think, oh, I think I'll remind everyone about Linda's this pure. embarrassing yeah. time. Yeah. Because that takes the focus off my inadequacies and the fact that I'm not doing anything or I don't have, like, I don't have a successful career or I don't have a successful bond. You know, just all these things that show up at the Thanksgiving table are happening. And you're like, how did all that show up? <laughs> but it, it did because of people's fragile ego states. Mm -hmm. So as you're going to your, the listeners, as you're going to these family dinners, what might be helpful for them to do prior to becoming the villain at the table or whatever the, the childlike, uh, what is the child like? Give me that. The ego part of the child that's not good. Hurt or angry. The, yeah. You don't want to be the hurt child at the table. So how are we going to help them not feel that way? Aww. Yeah. I just know that what's going on within, within you, mm -hmm. right, or within others, emotionally, mentally, is not necessarily what's happening in reality. Ooh, that's Dana. You know? Like, oh, I feel like everyone's judging me right now. I feel like everyone thinks that my sister's more successful and intelligent and, you know, whatever. Beautiful. Yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that doesn't mean that people are actually thinking this. You're feeling it. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and if they, even if they are actually thinking it, you get to decide whether, you know, what that means to you. Mm -hmm. Because everyone else thinks that my sister is more beautiful, intelligent, and successful. Does that mean that I'm you know, worthless and unimportant and unloved? No. Of course not. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, because you're, you are, as an adult, in your ego state are successful, intelligent, beautiful, and all these things. So maybe an awareness of when I go to that table and I become that broken little girl or boy, I've got to keep in mind when people say things here at the table, what's happening to me on the inside? Mm -hmm. Am I feeling more hurt, more broken? Criticize what's happening. So that means my wise mind or my adult mind, you know, shows up and says, You are successful. You aren't that same little girl cussing in church, Linda. <laughs> you're you're smart. You're a counselor. You're doing a good job helping others. So if I can frame it into the wise mind, what happens? Or the adult mind, ego state. Yeah, we're nurturing ourselves. We're soothing the limbic system that's got us all in fight or flight, going to call people out and, and scapegoat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> scapegoat us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're just reassuring ourselves that you know, we're safe and everything's okay. Yeah. And you can get pretty dysregulated at Christmas time and Thanksgiving um, because what's happening for a lot of our listeners 
and you know even cl our clients when they go to these things there's a lot of childhood memories that show up for them mm -hmm. wouldn't you say yeah that may be positive or maybe negative yeah yeah and I'm wondering you know what about the person who maybe isn't where they want to be in their career and maybe they've had a, a rough year or two mm -hmm. and they're not really happy with where they're at and they're feeling all all some type of way about what their family is mm. you know maybe saying like oh when are you going to get a job or oh how's your job going and you know deep down they hate it but they want to be like oh it's good you're, you're... what about mm. that person going to because i've been there i did you know oh. in a job that i wasn't I loving know or you know, didn't feel like I was where I wanted to be in my career, or you know, what have you. Thanks for that ago. vulnerability. Yeah. And everyone always wants to ask about how the job's going, or how things are going, or this and that, and you're just like, meh. <laughs> 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 but you don't want to say that, right? Oh. you got all these other people that are yeah you know, loving their job, and doing the, all these things, mm -hmm. and buying the house, and they got the new car, and yeah. yeah. So they got the latest iPhone 11. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. Whatever. Yeah. They're wearing their Apple watches and you're going, man, I can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? So then your inner child is sitting there like feeling wounded again. Oh, I know my sister's always doing better than me. Man. <laughs> so, so much is happening at Christmas and Thanksgiving when people get together and they're not even mindful or aware of those ego parts in, you know, this games that people play and what's happening for them. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how, do, how does that person that is struggling and feeling insecure, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we talked about the self self-talk self-nurturing you mm -hmm. know but if you don't feel successful telling yourself that you are isn't going to be helpful yeah so how would you help that that person that's sitting at the table and you're saying hasn't gotten to the place they want to be with their yeah. life goals so what can that person do and we we mentioned self-talk I think what would be important is to do a little mindfulness and meditation and focus on, oh my goodness, I've been honest. I treat people well. I'm a giving individual. Because there's so much more to the person than your, your income and your career choice that makes you you, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a really generous person. Yeah. And you want to contemplate, oh my gosh, I am really generous. And just get mindful about everyone has highs and lows in life. Yep. And eventually, it's going to go back up. Unless there's something catastrophic. You're in a flood or earthquake or lots of people die around you. I mean, there are massive things that happen. We're not saying, right. yeah. So, is that helpful? Like, the person yeah. that's feeling, man, I'm just not there um, where yeah. everyone else is. Yeah. Like, knowing, like, kind of prepare yourself and know that success isn't only your job or type of house or car or material things that you have. Like, success can be all kinds of different things. Yeah, how you treat other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, just having qualities of honesty and integrity. Mm-hmm. Those are diamonds to me. Yeah. When Which is really, I'm glad you say that because looking back, I wish that I had just been honest with people when they asked and been like, you know what? I'm, I'm blessed and happy that I have a job and I can pay my bills, but it's really, I don't see myself staying there forever. Because the jobs suck. <laughs> yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's, just, it's not what I want to do. I don't, yeah. I don't see it as long term. Yeah. And that's okay. And then you can have a genuine conversation. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. 
So getting a little bit vulnerable too in your dialogue at the dinner table or the Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners. So how's things going for you, Rachel, at your job? You might say, this is really sucks right now. I don't see it going anywhere. So I think that goes to Brene Brown stuff, that art of just being vulnerable and real. If the people are safe for you to do that. Yeah. Now keep that in mind. Because yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I have some poison, poison people in my family that I would never share anything vulnerable with because they would use it as ammo to, to hurt my hurt child and d- demolish my hurt child. <laughs> just go in and just tear her down, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to be mindful when you are being vulnerable and sharing at that table. Is this someone I can be real with? And they're going to be like, you know what? I've been there too. I've been in a job that it just, I knew it wasn't going anywhere. And you're going to find your niche. Mm-hmm. That would be the right response yeah. from someone safe. Yeah, and it, open, it opens if it's a if it's a genuine person that you're safe with and they care about you. It would open the door for them to say, "What is it that you want to do? What's your yeah. dream job?" You know, you could have this beautiful conversation, but if it's someone that um, is just kind of asking because they f- they ask you every year, they feel obligated to say something to you. Right. Stroke we your all spine, have that person. It's yeah, like, stroke your I spine. I acknowledge that you exist, but I don't really care what the answer is. I don't really care about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. you have those interactions too. Yeah. With people. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. So, what else might be helpful for our listeners? Do we want to go into some more things, or yeah. do you want to talk about some of the games? Yeah, and that... Rachel's got a lot more expertise in this. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> she does. Yeah, so we got a couple games that we decided we would discuss, like four or five here. And um, you may know some of these from people you work with, friends, family. Uh, the first one is, why does this always happen to me? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The I game, like it. why does this always happen to me? It's that person who is almost walking around with a, a, a do not kick me sign on them, which just leaves people <laughs> wanting to kick them yeah. in a way, you know, that's how it describes it in the book. And uh, then when they do get kicked, see, I told you so. They feel so <laughs> just, they're just always treated unfairly and they don't understand. We call it, um, it's the, is it the, the martyr syndrome or the victim syndrome? Is it martyr syndrome? Like, I think this one's victim syndrome. Victim syndrome. Why does this always happen to me? Yeah. I'm a victim, yeah. Yeah. And again, we aren't talking about people that are struggling with um, mental health, like anxiety, depression, trauma. That's not what we're no. talking about. Make sure, make that very clear for our listeners. You, if you've been victimized, you, you are truly traumatized. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we're talking about people that use this game for a secondary benefit. Um, why does this always happen to me? Um, have you had any experiences with that, Rachel, in your work or otherwise life-related situations? I, I think um, I'm having to think way back because I don't hang out with people that want to play games. <laughs> She don't like games. I got time for games. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's do some adult adult. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think I saw this one a lot in um, relationships. Like uh, like other people in their romantic relationships yeah. would kind of date, you know, a person that everyone knew wasn't good for them. It wasn't a good fit. They're going to end up hurt. Yeah. And then they end up hurt over and over again with different people. Why does this always happen to me? <laughs> You're picking the wrong person. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the, the, the game. What do they gain from playing Why Does This Always Happen to Me? Oh, yeah. Good, good question, Rachel. Why does this always happen to me? Any thoughts? Yeah, so a secondary benefit, secondary gain from saying that and being the victim is you know um 
Well, I could get sympathy. Yep. Um, from others. People won't burden me with more because I don't want to be responsible. Yeah. Um, what other secondary gain is there? Why does this always happen to me? Nurturing from others. And that might be Hearing, okay. oh, you don't deserve that. Yeah. You're a great person. Yeah. Getting people to tell you all the positive things about you. Yeah. So we we, we would agree with that one, though. Yeah. That's okay to play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Now I've got you. Ooh. It's the next game. Now I've got you. Mm-hmm. How do people play now I've got you? Finding a way to kind of trap someone or find something that they've done wrong. Mm-hmm. So these are the people that are like just waiting for a reason to go off on somebody. Yeah. I saw this like growing up, um, you know, there's there's always that one parent that's just like kind of like waiting for the school to call so they can just like tell them how it is. Oh, yeah. Now I've got you. Yeah, when they call, they say yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking, now I've got you. Just in, you know, my growing up and watching interactions among family members, I, I just remember them doing, like, their actions would be towards their own goal or their own benefit, and they would they would situate things so that the other person, they would create drama, mm-hmm. and they would do it in a way to to get something, you know, out of it. And they would just be like, no, I've got you, you know. Like, I I don't want to say too many things about what happened there when I was growing up. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just watch people play. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it in, you know, relationships too is, you know, uh, the the wife or the or the husband. Not, not in, at True Vine, not in couples therapy, just... Just seeing, you know, friends or whatever, just like, see, you know, he always makes me do that, and she'll act a certain way, and then he'll be like, now I've got you, you know, because she'll act the way, I don't know, maybe I'm not getting it right. No, I think you are. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really understand. It's, I want to preface by saying there are definitely times when things are systemically not right. Yeah. And you... And, and there's a time and place where people need to... Whistleblow. Wait. Yeah, whistleblow. Oh, I gotcha. You're going, you know, yeah. this is right, and I'm going to fix it. That's not what we're talking about. When people are playing the game, now I've got you, they find enjoyment and excitement hmm. in the possibility of catching someone doing wrong. Or catching someone in a lie. Or hmm. Cops? Yeah. Cops. Like cops, and, yeah. cops and robbers? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to be there to pick me up at 8, 8 a.m.? Okay. All right. I'll see you at 8 a.m. It's 8.05. What the heck? You're five minutes late. We're never going to make it on time now. We might as well not even go. Thanks a lot for ruining the day. <sighs> and they just, they're just loving it. Yeah. So now it's I got you. Drama. You owe me. Yes. It's that drama. Yeah. That makes sense. See, I'm not as familiar with these things. These are interesting to me. I, I, I'll, we'll talk about 48 Laws of Power sometime. Yeah, that's Linda's. <laughs> that's my thing. But these are similar, I'm sure. I just haven't pegged them with the right things. Ain't it awful? Yeah. Ooh. To me, ain't it awful, and why does this always happen to me, are, are kind of similar. The ain't it awful is just nothing ever goes right, nothing's ever my way. Yeah. Like, I just have a dark rain cloud <laughs> following me everywhere I go, and no amount of, you know, positive um, affirmations from other people will ever help. Yeah. Yeah, and, 
sometimes you know they want to focus on what's wrong Mm -hmm. in every interaction yeah and they want you to look at them and say why ain't that just so awful for you and what might be a reason for that why people would want you to say ain't that awful for you Oh, to someone else, like you're you're acknowledging so how awful it is for someone else who's who's confiding in you. Oh yeah, well, cause that I know that you're struggling and you're having a hard time, which makes me feel better because I know that your life's not perfect. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it would evoke more sympathy from you or empathy, maybe. Mm hmm. But there does, if you ever, if our listeners have ever been around someone that catastrophizes, everything is bad. I'm Eeyore. There's always a rain cloud over me. Like they just want to be miserable. Yeah. This is not someone who is not depressed, suffering from depression. I'm not talking about that. And wants to get better, and they're going to counseling, and they're seeking medication, and they're doing the things to not feel awful. This is the person that is not trying to get better. They want to be miserable. Yeah, and if you're sitting at your Thanksgiving table, it's possible to have one of those. I think everyone probably knows one. Yeah. Throwing a big assumption out there, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, people play games, so. There's someone somewhere. Yeah. So when they're playing Ain't It Awful, um, there's no. Uh, they just want you to look at them and say, oh, pity you. Pity. Mm-hmm. That's a pity. I feel sorry for you. Aren't you so pitiful? Yeah. Yeah. So. And you, you know someone's playing Ain't It Awful if you begin to feel frustrated and helpless. Ooh. Because nothing that you can do is ever helpful to this person. They're still miserable. Well stated, Rachel. That's so true. Oh, see what you made me do. Oh, Rachel has... Oh, yeah, who does this? Yeah. See what you made me do. <laughs> it's always someone else's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you get in trouble or something doesn't go your way, it's always someone else's fault. Someone made you do it. Blame game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kids, yeah. kids play this one a lot. Yeah, so... Because te- they don't understand the whole concept of, like, taking responsibility for your actions yet. Yeah, my teens always, you know, they always say, well, my probation officer made me do it. And my, <laughs> my, my, my grandma made me do it. And, you know, because they put me in this locked up facility, I'm, <laughs> this is why that, you know, I was smoking weed behind the school. They made me do it. If you hadn't been talking <laughs> smack about my mom, I wouldn't have punched you in the face. <laughs> you made me do it. You made me do it. <laughs> And that, that game uh, takes off ownership. That would be a reason for oh, that yeah. game. No responsibility whatsoever. Yeah. This is good I stuff. Have zero control. Yeah. Other people are responsible for my actions. Takes the spotlight off of you, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That's another game people yeah. play, yeah. I don't, I don't have to admit that I did anything wrong because it's not my fault. Yeah, somebody else. I like that game. I like that game. (laughs) (laughs) I want to play the blame game. My husband made me spend all that money at Christmas. (laughs) It's his fault he asked for those things. Now I don't have any money. (laughs) Yeah. All right. And then the last one we'll talk about today is yes, but. All right. This is the, the game people play when they're complaining about something and then you give them some like solid advice and they're like yeah but there's always an excuse for why they're not fixing the problem they're complaining about and and what is the purpose behind saying yes but i can't i can't possibly get up and do this this and this to feel better Gosh, Rachel. Oh, well, if, if I always have an excuse for not changing my behavior, then I don't have to feel responsible or put forth the energy to change my behavior. Because that would take 
time and effort. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, but... So you ever been in a conversation with someone you're like, hey, why don't you try... Have you ever tried working out? Say yes, but... Yeah, but I don't have time for that. I mean, I'm so oh. busy. Yeah, have you ever tried meditation to feel better? Yeah, but it didn't really work. I was just... Oh. Have you ever tried, um, you know, visual exercises to calm down? Yeah, that doesn't work either. And it's... I just didn't really like it. It felt awkward and weird. Oh. Now, so what is your... We're stepping out of the role play we just did. So what can you do if they give you yes, but, yes, but, yes, but? Nothing. What what part of self do you need to go into when they just say yes, but, yes, but? Oh. How do you end that game? Adult. Yeah. It sounds like you've tried a lot of things and they don't work, so perhaps, you know... Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I don't know what to do for you because yes, but always shows up. <laughs> yes, but. Okay. So I don't know. <laughs> As an adult, talking to your inner child who's given me all these reasons why you can't do these things, I might say, well, I think that that's your truth and you'll have to figure out something <laughs> for yourself. Right? Yeah. These are good, huh? Right. Did you? I hope that our listeners are enjoying this. This is an interesting topic, and this is psychology. I want to again say we're not talking about trauma, people with depression, anxiety. We're talking about general psychology, behavioral interactions among people. Yeah. And, yeah. Just talking about you know Dr. Eric Burns, games people play, transactional analysis. This is. His idea. He wrote a book about it. We think um, we think that our listeners are liking the kind of just knowledge of psychology, that which we want to share. Yeah, yeah, because we think it's fun. Right. Because our child, our inner child's come out and want to play. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for listening. And again, if you know you would like to seek out counseling with either myself or Rachel, give us a call. We, you know, we're available. And you can go to truevinewestvirginia.com. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, put in your information and we'll get back with you. Thanks for joining us for True Vine Talks. Bye. Bye.